We begin with the module on ratio proportion and variation. The topic is very very easy. However, uh, I advise you don't discount the topic because of its easiness. We are going to use ratios extensively throughout all topics of arithmetic. So every percentage change we are going to convert it to a ratio. Uh, half of time speed and distance we are going to solve it through ratios. Even ratios are important in weighted average concepts, right? Uh, so make sure you understand it in its thoroughness, right? Let's start by understanding what is a ratio. A ratio is a comparison. So we are going to compare two or more quantities and how are we going to compare it by the division process. Let's learn it through an example. So let's take the setting of a classroom. Classroom has number of girls and uh, number of boys. So one classroom has, let's say first, one classroom has 30 girls and 50 boys. And the question is, find the ratio of girls to boys. Ratio of girls to boys. By ratio, we typically just mean the number of girls divided by the number of boys. That is how we are going to compare it. So one classroom is 30 and 50. So if we compare it, we'll do 30 by 50. Usually ratios are reduced to their uh, uh, to the most reduced form. So when I cancel out the common factor, I'm left with uh, 3 by 5. Let's say there's another classroom, a second classroom. The number of girls have half to 15 the number of boys also have half to 25 so the ratio of girls and boys in the second classroom is going to be 15 by 25 i see a common factor 5 5 threes are 15 5 fives are 25 right so the ratio again turns out to be threes to five look ahead the actual number of boys and girls are different in the two classroom however the relative size the girls have half so the boys also have half. So in comparison, the relative size of girls and boys have remained the same, 3 to 5. Let's take a third classroom. Let's say the number of girls from second has tripled. 15 threes are 45. And the number of boys also have tripled. 25 threes are 75. So the ratio of girls and boys in this classroom will be 45 is to 75. I see a 15 common, 15 threes are 45, 15 fives are 75. So the ratio here as well is 3 to 5. In fact, in all the three cases, the ratio is 3 to 5. I repeat, the actual number of boys and girls in the three classrooms are different. However, their relative sizes, the ratio is the same 3 to 5. And from actual numbers going to the ratios is a very easy job. Let's go the reverse process. So I do not know the actual number of girls and boys, right? So let's ignore that. Let's say it is given that the ratio of girls and boys is 3 is to 5. The ratio is given to me. And I need to make a comment on the actual number of girls and boys. So there are certain number of girls which I do not know. Divided by the certain number of boys, again which is unknown. But I know on cancelling out the common factor, what will remain will be 3 and 5. So something is cancelled. It is possible that what I cancel could have been 10. 10 is one of the possibilities. In that case, the number of girls could have been 30 and 5 10s are 50. Right? As in the first classroom. But is it necessary that it has to be 10? In the second case, we had 5. 3 5s are 15, 5 5s are 25. Is it necessary this has to be 5? No, it could be any number. I do not know it now. Right? It is quite possible what I could have cancelled out may have been an 8. So then the number of girls could have been 24. If 3 8s are, number of boys would have been 40. This would also have resulted in a ratio of 3 is to 5. Right? Or else it could have been any number. I do not know. It could have, it may have been uh, 12. So both cases, the 12 would have been got cancelled. So it could have been 36, 5 12s are uh, 60. Right? So what I am saying here is, when the ratio is given, 
the values that I have arrived at are only specific cases. Specific cases and there can be infinitely many such cases. Infinitely many, right? This 3 is to 5 could end up this way, this way, this way or many such cases. So in a general case, let's handle a general case. Since I do not know what I am cancelling out, I cannot assume it as 10, 8 or 12. So I will assume it by a variable. Usually we assume a k. So 3 into k, the general number of girls would have been any multiple of 3 and the number of boys then would have been the same multiple of 5. So what we are learning here is given a ratio, there are infinitely many specific cases for the number of girls or boys. I cannot highlight any one of them. So in a general, we assume these are the actual numbers. So the actual numbers could be thought of as 3k and 5k. Hope that makes sense. Let's do one more example. This time let's take three individuals A, B and C. So I have A, B and C. And the amounts that they are carrying is let's say rupees 72, rupees 80 and rupees 56. So these are your actual amounts that they have. And the question is asking us what is the ratio of the money that they have, ratio of the amounts. Now there are three and the division A by B divided by C, there is no such. In division we can only use two values, we cannot do three. So how do we express the ratio? This time we express the ratio linearly. We say A is to B is to C. I am sure you would be aware of the symbol is to it's called right so instead of dividing it this way what we the idea is if there is anything common to the three numbers three or more then cancel them out and we will see that there's an eight common to all three so on cancelling out the ratio is going to be eight nines are 72 eight tens are 80 eight sevens are the eight cancels out and the ratio is nine is to ten is to seven right so, when there are 3 or more than 3, then we use the ratio A is to B is to C. We could have even used it here. Girls is to boys. Right? That is this 3 by 5 ratio is same as 3 is to 5. Let's do the same process again. Let's say the actual numbers are not known to me. I am just given. The ratio is given to me. The ratio is given as 9, 10, 7. And I want to make a comment on the actual values. What are the actual numbers? Now, as seen earlier, it is not necessary that the common factor that is cancelled had to be 8. That was one of the situations. So, 9 eights are 72, 10 eights are 80, 7 eights are 56. This, let me, since these are actual values, let me add a rupees in ahead of them. So, this is just one possibility. Please understand that could be infinitely many. One simple thing could be 9 twos are 18. It could have, A could have 18 rupees. Then 10 twos are 20. B could have 20 rupees. 7 twos are 14. This also could have been and then there are such, there are infinite possibilities. Right? So, I cannot highlight any one of them. So, what we do is, we, to change a ratio to an actual number, we introduce that multiple which, have, which we are unaware of. Let us say 9k, 10k, 7k. So the takeaway from this session is, if actual numbers are given, we can easily find the ratio by cancelling out the common factor. If ratio is given and we need to come to actual numbers, knowing just the ratio, we cannot come to a unique answer. Right? All that we can do is introduce a variable k and say the actual numbers could have been in this case 9k, 10k and 7k. Right? Uh, what do we do next? To find actual numbers, we need to know certain more information. So our first question on ratios. If the ratio of x to y is 3 is to 2, Find the ratio, there are two questions. The first, 
x plus 2y is to 4x minus y. So it's a pretty easy one. So it is given, it is given that the ratio of x is to y is 3 is to 2. Now this is given in a ratio. Right? To convert it to actual values, I want actual values. I, there can be many different set of actual values. So the general case could be x I could assume as 3k and y I could assume as 2k. And we need to find the ratio uh, x plus 2y over 4x minus y. So we just plug in the values that we have. Uh, so x is 3k. 3k plus twice of y which is going to be 4k over 4 times x 4 threes are 12k minus y y is 2k so that straight boils down to 7k over 10k the k will cancel out and the ratio is 7 is to 10 so nothing difficult out over here right uh, why are we doing this there is a set of students who consider that why do we need to get this k into picture? Anyways, it's going to cancel out in the end. So could I just assume x as 3 and y as 2? Pretty much, you could do that. So if I take x as 3, so I will at 3, y as 2, 2, 2 is a 4, x as 3, 4, 3 is a 12, minus y as 2, let me just take it as 2 and I get 7 by 10. Right? So this seems pretty fine enough until we check the second question. The second question is asking us find the ratio of x square plus y square over uh, x, uh, let's say x plus y. So in this case, if I go ahead with the same logic, so I just assume, so I just assume uh, x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 2. Then the required ratio will become 3 square 9 plus 4 over um, uh, 3 plus 2. And so the answer is 13 by 5. And there are a set of students who would put the answer as 3, 13 by 5. Uh, however, as we have seen earlier also, these are not the only values. I could have assumed, I could have assumed x is equal to let's say 6, y is equal to uh, if x is 6, y will have to be 4. It is only then that the ratio will be 3 is to 2. And in this case, x square is 36, y square is 16 over 36 6 plus 4. Let me write it in its 6 plus 4. This time I will be getting 46, 52 by 10, which on cancelling out by 2, I get 26 by 5. And the two are not equal. So what is my answer? Is my answer 13 by 5 or is 26 by 5? So the question is just done to reiterate that we cannot randomly plug in any values. The correct theoretical way would be assume x as 3k. So when I assume x as 3k, I'll be getting 9k square plus y will be 2k. That will be 4k square over 3k plus 4k or uh, 2k, which is going to be 13k square over 5k. The k and 1k gets cancelled, but the result will still have a k inbuilt. Right? So, there is no unique value. The value of this ratio will keep changing depending upon k. That is so, the data is insufficient to find the ratio. So I hope this question again reiterates and you learn this basic point. If the ratio is 3 is to 2, quite often your work will be done by assuming x as 3 and y as 2, but it is not always the case. Right? You should at least, even if you are not taking a 3k and a 2k, you should at least have that k at the back of your mind and check whether does that k cancel out. In the first case it did, so there was no problem. You could assume any value. You would always get the same point, right? Let's take 6 and uh, 4 and check this out. So 6 plus 4 twos are 8, uh, 4 6s are 24, minus 4. 
so 8 and 6 is 14 this is 20 which will boil down to 7 by 10 both are same right here it works but here it doesn't work why because the power of the numerator changed so hope you keep a little idea of whether that k is going to get cancelled or not going to get another question if x and y are positive numbers and 2x square minus 3y square is equal to xy find the ratio of x to y simple question all i'm just doing it so that you understand or you remember this pattern 2x square minus 3y square is equal to xy uh, the pattern is as a term in x square there's a term in y square and there's a term in x and y what happens here is if i divide throughout by y why am i doing it because the question is asking us find the value of x by y so if i divide by y square throughout this will boil down to 2x by y the whole square y square y square will cancel out a y square y will cancel with a y square and i'll be left with x by y so what what do i see quickly is that in this x by y the term that i want to find is present so representing x by y as k this simply becomes a quadratic 2k square minus k minus 3 is equal to 0 i have taken the x by y to the left hand side and written it in the quadratic form now i just need to factorize it uh, i'm not teaching you factorization here that would be an algebra 2 3 is a 6 i need the number whose product is 6 and the difference is 1 so that is 3 and 2 so the factorized form will be minus 3 by 2 and k plus 3 and 2 2 by 2 that is 1 so this is your factorized form and this will be true only when k is equal to 3 by 2 or minus 1 it's given that x and y are positive numbers so we would not be choosing this value and the ratio given the ratio is nothing but 3 by 2 uh, spend some time factorizing it yourself and just confirm.